A very good morning, everyone. I am Aditi Sinha, Assistant Professor of Department of Chemical Engineering of Haldia Institute of Technology. Today, I am going to discuss about washing of coal. As we all know that mainly the fuel is of three types, that is solid, liquid and gaseous. So out of this, I will today just forward the topic about solid fuel and only a part of solid fuel that is coal. So let's start with today's topic that is washing of coal. Mainly coal has two types of impurities. One is fixed impurity, another one is Free impurity. Fixed impurity is also known as inherent impurity. What is inherent impurity? It is actually derived from coal forming plant and cannot be separated from coal by working. So, the uh, basically it's a matter that cannot be separated from coal by washing. That is fixed or inherent impurity. As we all know that CFRI, Central Fuel Research Institute, CFRI, Dhanbad, uh, they have adopted a new technique that is oil agglomeration technique, which is mainly leaching of coal uh, for the impurity. They do it by using this petroleum oil to remove the impurity. Mostly the inherent impurity matter in coal is less than 3%. And what is free impurity? These are the impurities adhering to the surface of coal and comprise mainly of dark band and rock particles, which can be removed by washing of coal. So two types of impurities we have learned. One is fixed or inherent impurity. Another one is free impurity. Now, what is the nature of impurity present in coal? The nature of impurity present in coal may be of several types. What are those? Like the residual inorganic matter of coal forming plants, mineral matter washed or blown into coal forming mass during the period of its formation, pyrites like FES2, formed by the reaction of iron sulphate with coal forming matter sedimentary deposit during the coal forming periods and deposit formed through deposition on bedding planes saline deposit and lastly like slate shell clay etc from the underlying and overlying strata moisture so these are the nature of impurities that may be present in coal so why do we need to learn about coal washing method? What is the benefit of learning this chapter? As we all know that calorific value is an important parameter for any kind of fuel. And fuel on combustion gives out heat. And the parameter that calorific value that we determine gives the idea about the quality of the coal. So the less the impurity present in coal, more better will be the quality of the coal. So less the impurity, the better quality the coal will be. So if we can remove the impurity from the coal, then we can definitely maintain the standard of the coal. Because as we know that on burning the fuel, it generates heat and on generation of heat, for the generation of heat, we require power, it consumes power. So it, it is associated with the economy part. So each and every organization or industry is very concerned about this economy of the process. So that is the reason we'll have to understand about the quality of the coal as well as the impurity present in the coal 
and if the impurity is present in the coal what is the method to remove the impurity from the coal now what is the objective of this type of coal washing process that this type of washing of coal actually if we carry out this process it reduces its ash content reduces its sulfur and phosphorus content it increases its heating value improves its cooking property and increases the fusion point of its ash by removing alkali chloride and reduces its clinkering tendency so that is the main objective of coal washing to reduce the ash content sulfur and phosphorus content and increase the heating value so let's go to the next slide that is what is the advantage of clean washed coal so this clean washed coal has higher efficiency of utilization less clinkering in furnace lesser content of sulfur phosphorus chlorine and improves cooking property economy of transport and storage less ash disposal problem so basically to increase the efficiency of the fuel the efficiency of utilization we need this clean washed coal so for this coal washing method we have several washing methods like one is gravity separation method next is float and sink method and another one is froth flotation method under the gravity separation method we have wet process and dry process wet process and dry process so let's go in detail with this washing method in this dry washing process we can use pneumatic table it is if you see this diagram it's a basic diagram given over here it is perforated and ripples ripple sloping deck which is rapidly reciprocated it is perforated containing holes and sloping deck is riffled which is reciprocating see the direction of reciprocation is given in the slide the coal is fed from the upper corner of the table which is transversely inclined the table is given a reciprocated movement and air is blown through the deck and here the name that is pneumatic table pneumatic table gives an idea that this type of process will definitely use air so here air is used for the separation process the coal spreads out over the deck and is segregated into clean coal and refuse under the combined action of air flow reciprocating movement and frictional resistance of table the heavy refuse is trapped in the ripples and transported to the end of the table the clean coal passes over the ripples and travel towards the lower corner of the table the refuse middling and clean coal are collected in separate receiver see here if you see the diagram see the dirty coal is fed from the top of the table and the table has perforations and this is the direction of reciprocation it is directly moving basically and air is being used here for the separation process now from this pneumatic table three parts are basically separated one is clean coal next is middling and this third one is refuse so the clean coal gives the best coal and the middling contains some amount of coal but also the impurity and the refuse is basically impurity present in coal now this method is basically dry washing process there are several other process 
like air sand process, very smooth process. What is air sand process? The suspension of sand in air of a particular suitable specific gravity is used as medium for coal washing in which clean coal flows and the dirt sink. And in the Beresford process, it is based upon difference in resilience of clean coal and dirt. The feed coal is dropped onto an inclined plane containing a gap of chosen width. The clean coal bounds and falls on a receiver while the dirt falls through the gap. Now, this type of process actually has several advantage or disadvantage because this I've talked about two processes. One is dry process and another one is wet process. So dry process also has some pros and cons. Like what are these advantages? We so talk about the advantage of dry process. That is elimination of cost of drying wet coal. And there is cause no problem of disposal of slurry of water and fine dust. So these two are the basic advantage of dry process. So what is the disadvantage of the dry process? That feed should be very closely sized, least the separation efficiency will be very poor. And next is cores of difficult washability cannot be cleaned satisfactorily. So these are basic uh, pros and cons of this dry process. One is the advantage of dry process. Next is the disadvantage of dry process. For the advantage, if we talk about the advantage of dry process, definitely since the coal is dry, there is no cost required to dry the weight coal. And moreover, we don't require to think about for the disposal of the slurry. So depending on it, we depending on the process, we can select. But for which type of process we need dry coal and for which type of process we need wet coal. So that's all about this dry process. So in this class we have talked about only the dry process of the coal washing. In the next class we will continue with the wet processing that is the wet coal processing. So thank you everyone. Thank you for listening in this class.